I'd like to welcome everybody here. Um, I did see some of the uh, people on Zoom on the, uh, on the wall, but now you're not on the wall anymore, so you'll be happy to hear that, I'm sure. Um, so those who are in attendance in our COVID safe environment, and I do want to encourage those who have not yet attended in person um, that um, this is a very safe environment. Um, hand sanitizer and masks and distancing are all very strictly enforced and um, we find some ways to uh, fellowship from within those boundaries. So uh, try to make a, an effort to come at least once just to experience uh, Sterling in the building. Um, for those of you who are experience, experiencing uh, Sterling on your couch, I'm sure you're very comfortable because I've been there. Um, and those who are watching this uh, recorded, um, I hope that you can still feel the love, feel the connections, even though you're watching uh, later in the day or later in the week. So thank you for joining us at Sterling Mennonite Fellowship in Winnipeg. Somebody might be joining us from outside. Um, I would like to invite those of you at home with a candle uh, to light it, and I will light the peace lamp that we traditionally light uh, every Sunday morning. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please think of some prayer requests that uh, you may have um, that you would like to share with the congregation later on in the service. Um, you can text me. Uh, your item at um, or from your computer at home you can type it into the chat box and uh, we will check with uh, Andrew at the back uh, if there's anything there to prepare our hearts this morning I'm reading and those of you who have a bulletin can follow along uh, from Matthew 22 verses 36 to 40 teacher which is the greatest commandment in the law Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Shall we pray? O God, you withdraw from our sight that you may be known by our love. Help us to enter the cloud where you are hidden and surrender all our certainty to the darkness of faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning we have recorded music, um, so you can close your eyes, uh, relax back in your easy chairs, and uh, enjoy the music and focus on how the music is moving you and the lyrics and what the lyrics uh, are meaning for you and connecting to our worship this morning. morning kids today we're going to talk about love so i thought i would read you a book called no matter what so if you're joining on zoom it might be pretty tricky to see the pictures but if your parents want the book is called no matter what and you can uh, actually find it on youtube too if you guys want to look at the pictures later but i'll do my best small was feeling grim and grumpy Good grief, said Large. What is the matter? I'm grim and grumpy, said Little Small, and I don't think you love me at all. Oh, Small, said Large, grumpy or not, I'll always love you no matter what. If I were a grumpy grizzly bear, would you still love me? Would you still care? Of course, said Large, bear or not, I'll always love you no matter what. But what if I turn into a squishy bug? Would you still love me and give me a hug? Of course, said Large, bug or not, I'd always love you no matter what. No matter what, said Small with a smile, what if I were a crocodile? I'd still hold you close and snug and tight and tuck you up in bed each night. But does love wear out? Does it break or bend? Can you fix it or patch it? Does it mend? With time together, a smile and a kiss, 
Love can be mended with things like this. But what about when you're far away? Does your love go too, or does it stay? Look up at the stars, they're far, far away, but their light reaches us at the end of each day. It's like that with love. We may be close, we may be far, but our love still surrounds us wherever we are. So we're going to talk about love today and what Jesus tells us is to love God and to love each other. Um, Our friends and the people around us might not turn into crocodiles or squishy bugs or grizzly bears, but sometimes people are grumpy or maybe they're not very nice to us. So um, no matter what, we should still love them because that's what Jesus says, even if it's hard. Thanks, kids. I will be reading from the NIV, and I'll be reading from Romans 13, 8 to 14. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The the commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in one In this one rule, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfillment of the law. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armors of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in decession or jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. The word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. That sound coming through okay, Moses? A little higher. Okay, thanks. All right, well, good morning. So this was an an interesting uh, topic uh, that was uh, assigned, uh, and it was uh, was kind of timely because... uh, I think one of the things that uh, the pandemic uh, has given us time to reflect on a little bit is, uh, as we've gotten out of the busyness of our lives in some regards, is, uh, you know, exactly how is our our society structured? Uh, What are the laws, norms, rituals that we have just kind of been following without necessarily having a chance to really think about them? And so this this topic of uh, the... God's law and what is really important uh, is kind of interesting. So what I want to talk about today is just dig a little bit into that passage uh, that's on the front of your bulletin from Matthew, um, and then uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, how we see that reflected in our society today, and and maybe some ways that we can think about uh, bridging uh, the divide where where it does exist. So the things that I've kind of been interested to follow as uh, the pandemic has progressed is uh, it, it certainly has exposed some of the uh, shortcomings of, of our society. Um, I think there's been a, a, a record amount of drug overdoses uh, and suicides in most major cities, uh, at least in Canada and I think in parts of the U.S. as well. Uh, there's certainly been a sharp increase in violence uh, in a lot of uh, urban settings as well. Uh, and, and obviously a lot of, uh, lot of anger and frustration out there. Uh, uh, coming out in, in, in political uh, confrontations, but uh, seems to be more to it than just that. There's also been a lot of positives that I think we've seen, uh, which are also very interesting to reflect on. Um, 
I think one of the ones that uh, really struck me was there's been a, a uh, dramatic decline in the amount of premature births. So uh, uh, more babies are being born at, at full term versus being born uh, premature. That, that's interesting. Um, I think we're going to see uh, decades of interesting benefits from the fact that this group of teenagers had a chance to sleep. Uh, and, and it will be interesting to see how that imparts on their, uh, their brain development and, uh, and their, their physical development as well. So there, there are some, some very interesting things. It'll be years and years of research opportunities coming out of this, out of this pandemic. Um, and it, but it gives us a good chance to reflect on uh, what, we talk, what we're going to talk about is the laws. And I think we can talk about laws as not just the hard-coded uh, written rules, but also just the underlying norms of a society uh, at any given time. Um, and one of the things we'll talk about uh, to, today is uh, there's kind of the underlying, uh, the foundational truths and then all laws thereafter are built on that, and then usually some norms and rituals are built on top of that. And that's kind of what we're getting at with the uh, passage that, that Margaret read, is there's those foundational truths, and then all the other ones uh, kind of are built back on that. You can trace them back to that. Uh, and Jesus was very clear when he was being tested uh, by the Pharisee, who was an expert in the law, when he asked that question, what is the greatest uh, commandment in the law? And the response, I think, is, is, uh, is very interesting because the first word in the response is love. Um, and the, the, then the second part is about the heart, the soul, and the mind. And I find it interesting that uh, all three of those are, uh, are detailed out uh, because I think it reflects the fact that part of our human nature is we are often unreconciled internally. And uh, this, this, this seems to indicate that one of the things we need to do first is find that inner, reconcile, inner peace, being reconciled, uh, body and mind. There's a passage in uh, Romans 7 that uh, I think speaks to this as well. This is uh, Romans 7:21, and I'm reading from the, the Holy Version. Uh, so I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin and work within me. What a wretched man am I? Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I think that's it's a good honest admission by Paul of uh, we may know something, this is really the right way to do it. And yet we uh, have, have a hard time uh, getting our whole body and mind and soul aligned on following that. And, and that's, uh, that's one of the reasons why I think the love part of that first commandment is important. Um, because it's very difficult for us to accept the submission to God's uh, will and, and direction uh, without loving the result of doing so. So for, for us to be at peace um, with following God's law, we have to love God. It, it's not just about, okay, these are the rules and work really hard to follow each of these rules. It has to feel fulfilling uh, to have done that submission uh, and to have embraced uh, God's law in that way. So that's a very good foundation because it first means if, if we're gonna build this code of laws, first bring inner peace to yourself uh, first bring submission to something greater than yourself. And when you do that, the other laws become a little bit easier uh, to follow. The, the second one is uh, that he follows up with, again, the first word is love. Uh, so it's, that's a clue that it's probably important. Uh, and uh, then it's a focus on the other, the neighbor. Um, and that's, that's pretty important as well. In the, and it came out in the passage that, that Margaret read about how important it is to fulfill that debt uh, of love for others. Uh, and it really challenges us. And in, in, in that sense, there is an element of duty. Uh, but the word duty isn't used here. Uh, because if you love, then it's not 
an obligation. It doesn't have that sense of, of duty to it. But you want to do it because it is fulfilling for you. Uh, you have love for the other. And that's why you want to do things for, for them to help them or support them. And so it takes a great deal of selflessness uh, to do that. And, and lots of societies have been bound or grounded in the sense of duty first. Uh, it's probably a much more common way historically for, for societies to organize themselves than the way that we are currently uh, organizing ourselves. Um, an example, like if you look at ancient societies like the Spartans, who was a couple of hundred years before Jesus, very duty focused, and everybody knew what their duty was from the time they were a young child. Uh, and everybody who didn't follow that duty, there was significant and severe consequences. And that was led for a successful society for a long time. But I think we all find that if it's a sense of a duty and obligation, it feels like work and there's this inner rebellion against it. And so what, what, uh, what the law of God uh, highlights is the need for the love. Because when, when there is the love of uh, what we're doing, it doesn't become a burden and it becomes much more sustainable and fulfilling. It also makes it a little bit easier in this kind of society to figure out how you handle certain situations. Uh, you know, so if, uh, if a neighbor breaks a leg, if your society is based in these uh, laws that, uh, that Jesus has commanded, it becomes pretty straightforward, right? Uh, everybody leans in and helps. Uh, that, that, that person shouldn't, uh, shouldn't need to suffer any more than, than they already are with their physical ailment. There should be support and care and love that they feel. If a child needs care, there should be siblings, parents, grandparents, neighbors, congregation members jumping in uh, to help. Uh, if an elder is ill, uh, again, there should be a community that rallies around them. And it also helps to address issues of cohesion to keep the peace. Uh, if everybody is uh, reconciled within themselves because they have submitted to God and they are focused on loving one another, you probably don't have a whole lot of, uh, of tensions that can't be resolved through uh, good faith discussions. And so the whole basis of this is, is uh, elements of heal, honor, restore, and prepare. And I think it's, uh, it's not necessarily a sense of, of, uh, of, of charity so much. Um, and I was reminded of this when I went the rare time to work downtown and uh, just saw a great deal more people on the streets uh, um, in, in, a tough, in a tough way than was the normal. Um, and I was reminded that uh, the times that Jesus encountered people like that in the street or so forth, there's not a whole lot of times where he said, and Jesus threw a $5 bill at him and kept walking. Um, it, it was where Jesus interacted with those people, it was usually there was some element of the commandment of get up. Uh, and it was restoring that person. Uh, and that's a, that's a very interesting contrast to what we think of, of what does a nice person do uh, when they encounter somebody in need. And I think that's, that's what uh, a society based more on that element of, of duty to the neighbor, to the other, and love of the neighbor. Uh, you're not looking to provide charity to them. You're looking to empower and restore them because that's what we would want, right? We want to get to a better place. So that, that, that was some, uh, I, I thought, very interesting uh, elements of, uh, of the passage in Matthew. And, and I thought... Uh, well, how does that compare to uh, our current system of laws? Do we find uh, God's laws in our, current, uh, in our current society? And it is interesting because we really are living in experiment. Uh, and that experiment kind of started a couple of hundred years ago. Uh, but it's really only uh, fully taken off since the 60s and 70s. And in Canada, really was only codified in 1982. And, and that is to try a society that is very much not focused on uh, submission to God and very much not focused on duty to others. It is 
focused on individual liberty. And so it's, it's, there's a lot, of that, a lot of good things that come out of that kind of a system, but it is a relatively new idea in, in human history. And, and there's still lots of interesting things that, uh, that we're struggling to resolve in this uh, grand new experiment. And, and in Canada, that, when I said it was codified in 1982, that was the first time we had a constitution uh, in Canada. It was the first time that ideas of individual liberty were codified in law. Uh, and it's actually an interesting document to read. Uh, who's read the Constitution of Canada? No? No? It's, uh, if, if, you, if you choose to read it, uh, you will probably be very underwhelmed. It, it actually looks like something that would probably be the result of like a grade nine uh, social studies class. Um, but through it, you can get what the idea is because the very first part of it is part one is the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which is really focused on um, what you're all entitled to uh, as an individual. And it bas basically is about uh, articulating that you do not have these, these, these duties to anyone. You are an individual who's protected. And then obviously that addresses a lot of, of, uh, of concerns that people have about uh, somebody being uh, taken advantage of and so forth. It, this does uh, provide them with a lot of protections. It really puts our courts in a tough spot uh, because the, our courts now have to decide. When you don't have a constitution, your government decides and it can evolve slowly over time. Um, and, and as I said, is it, it's still being sorted out. One example of that is uh, 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 Canada no longer has a law for or against abortion. We have no law. We had a law, uh, but in 1988, the Supreme Court ruled that that law uh, was against the Charter of Rights and Freedom and struck it down. Governments following that said, oh, I guess we've got to write a new law. They tried a few times and just gave up. So, so there is now no law, right? Because we can't reconcile the fact that uh, the uh, individual liberty uh, of, in this case, women, um, how do you codify that in a way uh, that you don't also, in some sense, pr protect the freedoms of, of, of the fetus in this case? And so governments have just given up because it's not a, not a debate that they feel they can have any success with. But it's an interesting example of our experiment that we're still trying to sort through a lot of these things. Um, There's other challenges there. So I gave some of those examples of a society that's more based on duty. How do they handle uh, certain situations? Um, and in our society where we're focused more on individual freedoms and liberties, uh, it, be it becomes interesting that we resolve those same problems differently. So a neighbor breaks a leg or a child needs care or an elder is ill. Um, we tend to respond to those two things in one of two ways, either to commodify it uh, or to institutionalize it. And we have to do that because nobody has a duty or an obligation uh, to provide any of those things. And, and so those solutions, um, we're still in the process of building them, right? Um, we're, we're trying. It's, it's, it's expensive. Uh, it's, it's challenging. And it, it does become a little bit uh, uh, dehumanizing, right? Um, there's lots of good that can come out of that. Uh, there's expertise that we can bring to bear in those kinds of environments. Uh, but there is also some things that, uh, that are, are challenging in that regard. And when we deal that with that now, right, we, we, a lot of our political debates are what's the quality of our health care, what's the quality of our child care, the quality of our schools. And one of the, one interesting, of the interesting things, things, things about, about the, the pandemic, pandemic as, well as well is we're seeing a little bit of a, of a, of a intensification in two directions, right? right? right, right. Uh, no. One group one saying, saying, see, we haven't, we haven't spent, spent enough. enough. We have, we to, have go to go further, further in this regard. This regard. Uh, uh, we need we to need build, build more uh, large institutions uh, to address child care so that uh, we can get our economy back working. Uh, we need to address, we need to build bigger, better uh, long-term care homes so we don't have uh, the issues we're having now. And of course, there's another side that's saying, 
Well, that doesn't, what well, we've been trying this, spending lots of money on it, it doesn't seem to be working. We don't feel good about uh, the care that elders are receiving in the long-term care homes and the risks that they're facing. Uh, we don't feel good about the quality of child care um, in, in those uh, more institutional settings. And you see people uh, pulling back and saying, we've got to do things a little differently, and maybe that's more things being done in the home. One of the big trends right now is a sharp increase in homeschooling. And uh, micro-schooling is another term that I, I just encountered where small groups of parents are banding together to create a small school, hiring one teacher, and having a small community uh, where they are kind of working together to educate and raise their kids. I think those are interesting things that we'll see if they have long-term impact or legs. But you can see it's, it's really much a, a, a battle of ideas about how best uh, we uh, uh, run a society. And I, I think that's very interesting. I, I think the, um, the, uh, the experiment that we're under uh, has also uh, revealed some unexpected concerns. Um, a lot of why we went down this path as, as a society was the sense that there will be enhanced happiness if people are allowed the freedom to pursue their choices in life and are, are freed from the burdens of, of more traditional societies. Um, but it just, we haven't quite got there yet because I think the, uh, um, the levels of depression, anxiety, decline of physical health levels um, point to that we're, we're still struggling with this, with this experiment, right? Um, also an, of an interesting one is kind of the, the declining skills uh, that each individual has. Uh, and that, 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 that's, a, that's a little more complicated one as to how that comes about, but um, where each person is more individually focused, there's less opportunity to transmit knowledge uh, from elders, senior family members, down to younger generations. And so we're seeing kind of each generation having to kind of start from scratch a bit, right? So we're all scrambling to go to YouTube to learn how to, how to can food and how to cook certain things. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting element as well. Uh, there certainly seems to be a desire among society to have these skills, um, but it's, it's something that's more challenging for us to pass those skills down uh, when, when we are uh, focused on our, our individual liberty. So I think there's a lot to figure out here. Um, Times like this are interesting ones to reflect. Um, I do find it interesting uh, to take these moments, and this is one of the reasons why there's so much value in things like church, is the opportunity to reflect back and say, uh, you know, wait a minute, what, uh, uh, what can we learn from, from, from the teachings of Christ? Uh, do they have any application today? And, and, and I found a lot of wisdom in, the, in this very simple, well-known passage in Matthew 22. And the love part really struck me, uh, but I think uh, for me it really resonated that one of the biggest things we find people missing right now is that sense of happiness and fulfillment. And uh, uh, just pure obedience to laws uh, or taking advantage of liberties uh, doesn't seem to provide that. Uh, but if we reconcile ourselves uh, in submission to God, uh, we find a peace and a happiness. And if we carry that out in uh, love to our neighbors, uh, it seems to be a better recipe for happiness and fulfillment. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, we necessarily need to have things dramatically change, uh, because uh, one of the great things about our Constitution and our set of laws and norms in our current society is that we do have the freedom to choose. And we can choose to still follow the wisdom uh, that we see in the teachings of Christ. We can do that as families, we can do that as a congregation, we can do that as, as a community. Uh, there's nothing that prohibits it. The fact that we've given the, been given the choice just makes it a little bit more tough because sometimes uh, it's, it's nice when we don't have to make the choice. Uh, but we do have that choice. 
And so that's one thing that I think is uh, uh, something I take away from this, and it's been very thought-provoking for me, is am I uh, setting up my life, uh, the life of my family, am, am I living it according to these, uh, these two commandments uh, that, uh, that Jesus shared for me? Um, I think I'm on the right side of the law with our Constitution for the most part, uh, but that's probably less important than being on the right side of, uh, of the teachings of Christ. So I'll, fi I'll finish there, um, because uh, uh, that's all I got, um, but also because uh, I think that's enough to, uh, to digest in, in, in one moment. Uh, so. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, address this community. It's great to be able to interact uh, a little bit in person and also virtually. Uh, and certainly this is an idea uh, that we'll, uh, I'll probably keep thinking about for quite a while. So if there's anybody that has any countering ideas or would like to talk about it further, I'd certainly uh, be very open to that. Thanks very much. This is our opportunity. There we go our opportunity to, uh, to share and pray together. Amen. After the benediction in closing, I will ask you to exit the sanctuary out the front right doors under the direction of the ushers. I also ask that as you gather together outside, and I do encourage you to do that and um, at least make some conversation, please remember to gather in groups of five or less um, because we, we have that mandate to do that. And we're also um, very visible and we want to be an example. Um, that we love each other and we love our community. So keep our masks on, which is another, um, another sign that we love each other. The mask is for the other, not for yourself. So remember that um, and keep uh, Corny's words in mind. Um, and I would like to encourage everyone at home watching the video and here at church to continue to find ways to connect. Um, the, uh, the Zoom group can have a, a, a chat and visit time if, if uh, they wish. Um, and I encourage each of you to call somebody this week from the community, from our church community at home, on Skype, um, on FaceTime, just so that we can continue to share our lives. Let my cry reach the ears of the Lord. Let's rise for the benediction. Those at home can stay seated. Go in love, for love endures. Go in peace, for it is the gift of God. Go in safety, for we cannot go where God is not. Amen.